This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. To the huddle with the man, the myth, the legend that is Matt Verderam. How you doing, Matt? Good afternoon, sir. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. You uh, you concerned about Chris Jones holding out with uh, your Chiefs there? He wants uh, he wants uh, Aaron Donald money there, buddy. Yeah, on one hand, he kind of deserves it, doesn't he? I mean, on one hand, you say, hey, look, you know, I mean, the guy was the best defensive tackle in the sport last year, and, he, and he's been second fiddle to, to Donald for a long time. On the other hand, Donald's contract is such an outlier compared to everybody else's that you say, well, where does Jones fall in that range from Donald getting 31, 31 and a half, and Quinn Williams at the next guy's 24? So where does Jones fall? Now, I would argue that Jones falls to the high side of that. It's probably, I think 28 is probably the right number. You know, maybe it's a little bit higher. But I'm not surprised that he wants close to 30, if not 30. And I'm not surprised that the Chiefs are digging in here. Okay, in the end, I still think, if you're the Chiefs, what are you going to do? You're not going to pay that guy? Like Tyree Kill was one thing. He's on the offensive side of the ball of Patrick Mahomes. Chris Jones is your defensive Patrick Mahomes. If you don't pay him, that thing doesn't work. And I'll tell you the other part of this, and you know this from being in locker rooms. If they don't pay that guy, Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes, who are on very team-friendly deals, are going to be sitting there going, why oh, yeah. are we leaving money on the table? Like We're not paying him or Tyreek Hill. What, what's going on? Tyreek, you understand if you're those guys. You get it. Chris Jones is a whole other animal. If you don't pay that guy, I think there's some very hard conversations going on in that locker room. So I think they will pay him eventually, but – they're at an impasse right now, and it's tough to predict exactly what's going to happen. I wonder how far they, how far apart they are at this point. That's you know, uh, that's really the real question. What, what's the difference? What do they think he's worth right now? And obviously, we know what Chris Jones thinks he's worth. And yep. and again, it's he's the only guy in the NFL that you could like. Okay, let's have a discussion. Him and Aaron Donald, you know, like. Even though you're going to say Donald is better, yes. but you at least can make an argument for Chris Jones because he is such a force that is un like Donald. It's just one of those guys that are they they change the entire face of the game when they're playing. And so it's just it's a screwed up situation because he is one of those guys, dude. He. I just don't know if you achieve. And and the one other thing too, because I've seen a lot of people say, "Well, it's like the Tyree thing." Hey, there's one huge other. Difference no, difference. no, 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 no. A quarterback can elevate others. Correct. And you can get other receivers, and plus you have a great tight end that is really mm -hmm. your other number one guy. So Correct. you can do things with a quarterback and other – look, Joe Montana, everybody talks about, oh, yeah, no, he had Rice and Taylor, and, and he had Dwight Clark. and all. But then they forget the first championship that Where was they... Freddie Solomon – you know, as his, well, as his caught, like, wide passes. receiver, and yeah. and he had like a uh, Greg Cooper as his running back. It wasn't Roger Craig, by the way. No. You know, no. it, it's one of those things that like people over kind of look that, and they say, "Oh, well, yeah, well, yeah, dude." But remember his first championship? It was really only Dwight Clark that was kind of like busting through at that moment to become an elite tight end. Outside of that, there were no other elite pieces that yeah. he had. On the offense, you know, and he won. And so when you have a great quarterback, you can elevate others. If you miss Chris Jones, I'm sorry, dude. The next guy is not even going to be half of Chris no, Jones. Not in the stratosphere. And I think the other part of it, too, though, the, the point I was going to make was that the calendar is different. When the Tyree Kill thing happened, that was in March. There, right. Everybody had cap space. Right. Nobody has cap space right now. So like, right. let's, say, let's even say the Chiefs are like, yeah, we want to trade him because we're not going to sign him. Who are you trading him to? I mean, right. you're, I'm not saying there's nobody out there, but I'm saying you, you would have to find the team that has the space, that has future space, that is willing to then give you a litany of draft picks and then also pay him 30 plus million dollars a year. I mean, that's a hard thing to do any time of the year, let alone in July, late July. So right. I still think the most common sense thing is the Chiefs move, maybe Jones moves on little. But in the end, if you're Chris Jones, you don't want to play on a one-year deal. Things happen. You don't want to no, do that. No, and no, if no. you're the Chiefs, you don't want Chris Jones potentially walking out of the door for nothing after the season. So 
I think I think the smart answer for both sides is to eventually just go, okay, let's figure this out. I think they will. But every day that he's not there is another day where you go, well, could it turn ugly? Okay, possible. Uh, what'd you think of the Saquon Barkley after you know all the talk? Um, you kind of folded quickly. Yeah. And, and listen, I get it. There really nobody has leverage anymore at running back. There, there's no such thing as un, un, unless you unless he really held out. That was really the only leverage he was going to have because um, you may not be old enough. You might have been really young at that time, or maybe or maybe just born. But when Emmett held out in the nineties, that was five. For, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, well the like but Dallas got. Yeah, and I'm sure you do because you're a historian. But Dallas got their asses kicked in the first two games, and it was like, oh, shit, we're in trouble. And they, paid him. And, and they came right back to the table and gave him the money. And I think Saquon could have had that effect, to be quite honest, because – I agree with you. Th this quarterback isn't even Troy Aikman. He isn't even close to Troy Aikman. Close to Troy Aikman. And, yet, and yet they were struggling without Emmett Smith because they could not run the ball the same way. It's funny how people always say – well, Emmett had a great line. And then, yeah, but you don't remember when he held out? Like, you, like you forgot? You forgot that he was great at Florida? You forgot yeah. that he owns all the Florida records at Escambia High? You know, it's, you know, there's always this kind of, you know, the convenient memory that people have about, about others. But Saquon, like, really, he's the one guy that really could have leverage. Because Jacobs is in the middle of a rebuilding situation with the Raiders. So they're not going to be any good anyway. So his impact, but the giants with that young coach, you just made the playoffs, all that stuff. Saquon holds out for real. You probably could have put them in a big hole and really sent your message. So what did you think of Saquon kind of folding so quickly and really settling for the tender $900,000 more? No big deal. Right, you got incentives. What what surprised me was okay. Look, I get it. You're once the franchise tag deadline pass, you can't right. You can't get a multi year contract. So you're getting what you're getting. I mean, once you sign, you're coming in. Okay, fine. You got the incentives. What I was surprised though about that thing was why didn't you make sure you couldn't be tagged next year? I mean, you could say the Giants are just going to sit there and play hardball. Okay, then fine, make them. Then make them play hardball. Like make them do it. I. Because that's the one thing about running backs beyond all the stuff we've been talking about. That tag is nothing. They could tag him again next year. If he yeah. goes out and is 1,500 yards and is an all pro, guess what's going to happen? He's getting tagged again. That's what's going to happen. Like, Oh, dude, by the way, he didn't sign the tag, right? Correct? Yes, but it Does, counts against him. Though. It, it counts it that, they use. count as one it of the counts. tags they've offered, so they only they have did, two more of them. Okay. Correct. But they can tag him again. I would have thought if he was going to sign that deal, they should have included, you can't tag me anymore. Now they can tag him again. So okay. he got a, some incentives, which, by the way, are all tied to the, the Giants have to make the playoffs. They don't make the playoffs, and, and this all goes up in smoke anyway, to my understanding. So I don't understand, if you're Barkley, why you cave so fast. And, and I'm with you. Look, they pay Daniel Jones $40 million a year. You and I have talked about this. That contract – is insanely dependent on a lot of other guys playing well around Daniel Jones, which is why they just gave Andrew Thomas a fortune, okay? They know that if Andrew Thomas is not great and Saquon Barkley's not great and Darren Waller doesn't come in and play really well, they got a problem because they just paid a guy $40 million bucks who his best year was 3,200 passing yards and 15 touchdowns, okay? I mean, that's, that's like two-thirds of the season for guys like Burrow and Mahomes and Allen and, and Hurts and so on. So – I look at the Giants and say they were the one team I thought of all the running backs who were tagged that maybe they'd cave with Barkley because he's just so uniquely important to them. But they didn't. But now they don't have to because now they could just tag him again next year if they want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just I, I thought that it was just kind of weird that yep. they would give up all, all that lever. He would give up all that leverage, especially since, you know, I thought he actually had some. He did. You know, I thought he really could burn the – I think he was in the right position to burn a team that has a lot of hype coming in. They got to get to the playoffs again. You're in New York with that media, all of that. I thought he could have really done some damage. But, again, I kind of get it. If you're a running back right now, 
it's a scary position because they're not folding for any running backs right now. Nobody has has made a team, you know, uh, nervous or anything like that or buckle. And so right now, running backs are, man, they are in a yes. in a bad situation. All right, what'd you yes. think of the uh, the Herbert extension? No trade clause, a hundred million the first year, averaging fifty three, um, all of that stuff. What, what'd you think of that deal? That was. I, it, I got to give the agent a lot of credit. They negotiated one hell of a deal, and they got a no trade clause. Yeah, that is huge, bro. I mean, if you're Herbert, <laughs> you're set up. You're feeling pretty good about yourself here for the next seven years because you got the two years left on the rookie deal, and then you got the extension. So you're good for the next seven. If you're the Chargers, you're happy about the fact that a you've locked them up, b you have rolling guarantees, which means that essentially you don't have to put all that money into escrow right away which is something that was going to be a hurdle for the Chargers. I imagine the Bengals are going to try to do the same thing with Burrow when that time comes. Um, right. He's now the highest paid quarterback. That's going to last about eight minutes until Burrow gets paid because Burrow is going to overtake right. him. And that's the way this goes. We know this. Um, look, I thought the deal was in terms of the average value. I mean, you knew that he was going to come in right around there. I had talked to agents over and over and over. It was at 60, 60, 60. I mean, okay, you're going to want 60. You, but the reality is these teams aren't going to go from 51 to 60. So he gets he gets a little bump over Hertz, over Lamar, you know, the guys who signed this offseason. Um, I thought you know the hundred million right off the bat is is a, was the thing that I said, wow, that, that was the surprising. I mean, because I think 80 was the previous record. So a hundred okay. million up front, like, wow. Okay. I mean, that that was the Joe And stopper. we're talking and we're talking Dean Spanos. I know, I know. Well, and that, but you know, here is my question. They paid Herbert, and we've we've talked. Like they had to pay Herbert. They have to, just like the Bengals oh, yeah. have to pay Burrow, right? Like we knew this was going to My question is now, do they pay anybody else? That's the question. I know yeah. when the time comes, the Bengals are going to pay Burrow. They have to pay Joe Burrow. If they don't, they yeah. might as well be contracted. But like yeah. Mike Brown talked a couple of days ago, and, and, and I'm paraphrasing, but essentially said Burrow is the heart of the matter, and then everybody else, you know, there's going to be a little less. Well, you think Jamar Chase can take a little less? Jamar Chase no. he's taking a little less. <laughs> like, no. He Higgins what, I will tell, what I will tell you is they will not sign the other guy. They're not going to have T. Higgins and, and Jamar Chase. No. They're not, they're not cool. doing they're not doing. See, Stephen Ross is a crazy son of a bitch. He'll cut the checks. He doesn't care. But Mike Brown and Dean Spanos are not yeah. going to be cutting checks like Jerry Jones and 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 and, uh, and and our yeah. guy here, you yeah. know, uh, Ross would do. Certain guys are going to do that, and then there are other teams that are just not going to do that. And that's where I think it's, you know, that's where I think those guys are going to end up realizing, okay, it's great, I got my yeah. money, but I'm looking around and I'm not getting the same kind of support. And guys I'm, are walking out the door and getting deals in, in in other places. You know what I'm saying? I'm so, fascinated. Like now the Herbert deal is done. I'm fascinated to see what Burrow's deal looks like because oh, yeah. I want to know, does Burrow just say, look, I want to be the highest paid. I don't care. I want 55 million a year. Or does her, or, or does Burrow go the Mahomes route and go, you know what? I want my money, but I want it over a 10 year stretch. So, no I, way. so we can flex every year because that's the only way they're going to be able to afford everything. You don't treat the hunts the same way you treat the Browns. And his agent's going to know that. And he's going to say, no, we need to get our money now. I, look, I would always side with you in the sense that guys want their money. I mean, the Mahomes contract is an outlier because of the length, right? I mean, it's just Mahomes got his annual value. Mahomes got, I mean, that $45 million now is like a complete bargain. But at the time, it was a record-setting value. But the length is what gives it such flexibility. I'm right. curious to see if Burrow signs into the length or – if Burrow says, I don't trust that they're going to surround me the way I need to be surrounded. And so five yeah. years sounds good. And I, my guess is it probably will be five and it'll probably be you no know, 55 a year. And Bro, you got the Hunt family and you got Andy Reid. Right. It like, is a different situation. I agree. It's a whole different ball game, bro. When you, when you like you, when you step into, you know, the Spurs and Popovich or the heat and Riley or, you know, you there are just certain franchises that you're as a player, you're going to say, OK, yeah, I can sell myself out here because these people compete with or without me. 
it's not about me. It's about that that franchise just wants to win. You know what I'm saying? So I'm in the right place. And that's where Mahomes and, and by the way, if you watch quarterbacks, you 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 get the sense that he loves being part of Chiefs Nation yeah. and all that stuff. You know what I mean? And he loves the stadium and he loves everything about it. So you could see why he would sign that kind of a deal. You know what I mean? And, and, and you know, I think it's very Tua and McDaniel like, you know, Mahomes gets there and he has the perfect guy to teach him, to mature, to, to develop him, to, to help him, all of that stuff in Andy Reid. Tua went through hell with Flo and he knows what a jerk looks like. Now he gets McDaniel. And he's like, wow, dude, this guy is like, you know, a, a, a player friendly guy that he gets it. So Mahomes just went into the perfect place, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, I we think, still you know, have the Bengals. The Bengals are, are going to be forever on double secret probation because of Mike Brown. Yeah, I, 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 look, I, here's, here's the other part of this. So let's be honest. I mean, you know, Jalen Hurts signed his contract. It was five years. Lamar Jackson signed his contract. Five years. Herbert just signed the extension. Five years. When Russell Wilson signed his extension, it was five years, which then for now, which probably was two years, but it was five years. Um, most of these guys, Allen's five years. Like mo most of them are five years. Most of them are five years. Mahomes' deal is such an outlier. A couple of them are four, Dax, Daniel Jones, you know, but they're right in that range. And so if you're Burrow, that would, I'm, I'm absolutely hedging that that's where it would go. I just, you know, if you're the Bengals, that's, see, and again, and we, we started to talk about the Chargers, and I think it's true of them too. Like, I know you are going to pay your quarterback. You have to pay your quarterback. You have no are, choice. You, are you going to pay the guys around? Like, let's say Rashawn Slater goes out and has two all pro caliber seasons next year. Are you going to pay him like Trent Williams? Or are you just going to go, yeah, that doesn't sell enough jerseys for us? Are you yeah. going to, like, next year, the Chargers are massively over the cap. They're going to have to move on from Eckler, move on in all likelihood from Khalil Mack. Allen or Williams is gone, one of them, if not both of them. Like, right. how do you build that team around that guy? That's the thing that I'm watching for with these teams because you can sign the quarterback. You can always sign the quarterback. Do you Great. do you keep the guys around them, or do you just say, "Yeah, now that we paid you, we're good"? That that's the key. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're, we're look at Flacco. You ended up paying him in Baltimore, right. and then you couldn't pay everybody else, and then a whole bunch of defections happened, and you weren't the same team again. After that, you know, and Flacco got on his own run and, you know, kudos to him, 11 touchdowns, no interceptions. That was a great run for him. But he also had all the other pieces around that kind of balanced everything out. And then all of a sudden, everybody else wanted to get paid and they had to go elsewhere. And it just changes, you know, the game. And so it'll be interesting to see. Although here's the funny part that I keep hearing from people. And you just said the key point. Well, Herbert's getting paid, and, and Tua's watching. He's not getting paid. Well, actually, Herbert hasn't gotten paid yet, and neither has Tua. Four years. But at the end of the year, if Tua gets his extension, guess what? They'll both get paid at the same time because they're yeah. extensions. They're yeah. not happening yeah. right Correct. now. Correct. Okay? Yeah. That's the one thing I will say, and for people out there, just keep note of this because I get this all the time on Twitter. Whenever I talk about somebody getting an extension, people are like, well, that's it. Chargers capped out now. It's like, no, 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 no. Their, their cap numbers are still the same. The Chargers won't be paying Herbert a big, big number for like three more years. Okay? <laughs> right. Because you have you have the fourth year of his rookie deal, his fifth year option. Then the first year of the extension, the number will be lower than all the rest of the numbers. Four so years. his next three years are all going to be relatively cheap. And then in the fourth year, that's when the number goes boom. Okay? That's where the bills are right now with Josh Allen. Like Josh Allen, now now that number is starting to climb. I and mean, he signed the five year extension right when he, you know, right after his third year. So for a guy like Josh Allen, you know, his his number was not necessarily, in fact, not necessarily, it was not big for years. Now, all of a sudden, so if you look at his cap number, just as an example, it was 10.2. Then in then last year it was 16.3. This year it's 18.6. This is the last cheap year. Right. This is the this this is before the extension. Now the extension kicks in 47 million next year. Right. Goes from 18 to 47. Right. So now with the with the Bills, they structured his extension in a way that it's 
it's going to hit right off the bat. I mean, he's going to – And I, By the I, way, I, to, the Bills, to the Bills' credit, to the Bills' credit, they've been honest with everybody about what's coming. Like, they – They, they have they've been very upfront. Their fan base, like, hey, you know, we're – our, our, our purse strings are going to get a little tighter here yes. as the whole thing. So I give him credit for that at least. And I, I, and I want to correct. I said earlier, he signed a five-year extension. He signed a six-year extension. I forgot. He signed a six-year deal. So, but the point, I want to be clear. The point is, this is the first year of that extension. So the first year of the deal, the number's still low. That's typically the structure in the NFL across the league. Next year, that's when it blows up. And then he's pretty much locked in no matter what. For quite a while. I mean, the first year, if, if something catastrophic happened, that they could really move off. It was like 2026, and they still need a lot of money. Um, but, yeah, the reality is Herbert will still be cheap for another three three seasons. It's that fourth right. year when when the money starts to skyrocket. Right. Uh, it's just stop it already. With a, well, they're getting paid, and Tua's not. No, no, they're not getting paid. It's an extension. They haven't gotten paid. Down the Tua's road. will kick in the same time as Burrow. If he, after his fourth year, he has to sign an extension, it's only one year later that the extension will start after that. And it'll be three years later where the big number will come. Yes. But that's just kind of the way it is. But it's, you know, it's not a, it's not such a big thing. Um, quarterbacks. I finally finished the whole thing. Did you finish the whole thing? Yeah, I watched it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to tell you something weird because, you know, everything we do is full of testosterone and machismo. What stood out to me in that entire series were the women, the wives, bro. I agree in a lot of ways. And, and let me tell you something. The one that's married to your quarterback is the one that a lot of people pick on. Mm -hmm. And because, you know, whatever, you know, she's kind of out there on social media and all that. But one of the things that I will say, and I'll respect her for for this big time, is she ain't no gold digger, bro. She didn't jump on the bandwagon in his senior year in high school when he had 40 offers and, oh, let me get on the gravy train before it becomes gold. No, dude, they met in middle school. He chased her. So, you know, that's pretty cool. You know what I mean? And then when I look at her cousin's wife, man, she's a freaking rock. And then when I look at Mariota's wife, who man. has to reset every other year or every year because he's going to be in a, in a different city, to me, that's what stood out is the other person attached to all these people and and what they go through and then the support base that they have to be for their for their guys. You know, uh, that to me really stood out in quarterbacks. Oh, there's, there's no doubt. I agree completely. And I think, you know, a lot of times people don't think about the fact like when these guys get cut and they, they sign on somewhere else, like, you don't think about the actual like. The, the behind the scenes part of that. Hey, guess what? Your kid's in school. That's tough. You're either not going to see your kid now during the season or you're going to transfer schools and you're going to move your whole life. I mean, that's, you know, okay. You're a single guy. That's one thing. Okay. You know what? Right. Fine. You got a family, you know, like oh. Mariota in the show just had a kid. Right. I mean, that is, yeah. hey, guess what? You're going to play in Philly now. See ya. Like that's where you're going. I mean, and, and with Mahomes. I will say, I have never understood the vitriol toward his wife. His brother, I understand why people Oh, have. his brother's a... His brother's a whole other story, okay? I'm never going to defend his brother. He's but a his wife, bag. the people are like, well, you know, she's really loud and in support. It's like, well, she's his wife. I mean, I, I mean, she goes to the games and roots. I mean, seems like a good mother, and, and I, mean, I don't know the woman personally, but um, yeah, you're right. I mean, I think, and, and it's funny, I don't know if you've ever seen their prom photo. That is an all-timer. Yeah. If you ever see the pro if what he looks like at prom, she hey, she she was the catch in high school. Let's just put it that way. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so no, I, I think I think she gets a lot of undue crap from people where the, the brother is yeah, you know, fine, whatever. You want yeah, to yeah. Forget, time. forget the brother, but but I got no issues with her. I gotta tell you, no issues with her. After watching that, I got nothing but respect for her, man. You, you know, know what I mean? I think and, so, and, uh, and, I'm a, and I'm a huge fan of Kirk Cousins' wife. For sure. That woman, Absolutely. Wow, yeah. that woman's a rock. I thought, woman's it was, I thought it was cool they showed after the, the Vikings lost their, their playoff game. Like Kirk Cousins went went home and sat down and read his kids a book, right? And went – I mean, it's like these guys are people. I mean, they're look, they're, they're in the spotlight in a way that – you know, I forget there was one part in the show – 
Mahomes and his family. It might have been when they when they were like playing like that the game they're trying to like play a carnival game. They're tossing something into it, and like she got it first, and um, you know, he he was embarrassed and he threw a football through the through the little cutout in the wood piece. And it was funny because there's nobody else around them. And I'm like that's because they probably shut that whole thing down so they could go, you know. <laughs> and it's but it's crazy when you think about it. They can't live normal lives. They can't do it. I mean, and if you're Brittany Mahomes, like you didn't sign. I mean, you signed up for that in the sense you're married to the man. But like when you were 15 and you started, you know, love the guy, you didn't fall. You didn't sign up for that at the time. You didn't know that your whole life was going to be, hey, you can't go to the grocery store because right. you're going to have a horde of people coming up to you and your kids. Right. I mean, it's it's a crazy life. That they, that they live and I thought the show did a good job of, of kind of displaying that yeah yeah I, I thought it was uh pretty cool uh by, by the way my boy Kadarius Tony injured again bro Jesus I, Christ it's I, unfortunate I'm, but it's not I'm, I'm a big fan of Kadarius Tony I think his talent is special but brother he, he's brittle Jesus Christ dude he got hurt crazy. like minutes into practice I know, I know. yeah yeah all right, what do you got going on on Sports Illustrated so folks uh, can check you out? So, speaking of Canaries, Tony, I've got a column that I was asked to write coming out on Friday about uh, the Chiefs and Tony, but really more of a look at, like, receivers and how important they are to winning Super Bowls. And I'll, get, I'll give a little teaser for this. I went back and I looked at the last 30 teams that have won the Super Bowl. Out of those 30 teams, would you like to venture a guess how many had multiple 1,000-yard receivers? And, and I, they don't just be wide receivers. It could be tight ends, backs, just multiple 1,000-yard pass catchers. I'm going to go uh, the Rams and San Francisco in the back in the day maybe had two 1,000-yard guys. Well, not maybe. For sure the Rams. And yeah. I think Roger Craig and Jerry Rice, maybe even Taylor got over 1,000. So I'm going to go those guys. Um, I'm just going to go those. What else, What do you got for me? Well, of the last 30 teams dating back to the 93 Cowboys. Oh, well, no, yeah, no, the, the San Fran wouldn't be included in that. Yeah, that right. Was, they didn't, there's only be... six teams that did it. Only six. Because my point was you have Kelsey on the Chiefs, who's good for a 1,000 every year. And then it's like, do you, do you need that second guy? Ironically, the two times that Mahomes hasn't had 2,000-yard receivers, he's won, he's won the Super Bowl both years. Because the year that Hill was there, Hill was hurt early in the year. He missed like five games. He had a shoulder injury. So he had 860 right. yards in 11 games. But it's fascinating. Right. The point was, the, ironically, two, two years back-to-back -back that it happened was Denver, both years with Elway. McCaffrey and Sharp did it one year, and Rod Smith and Sharp did it in another year. And then Falk and, and uh, Bruce, I think right. the Colts with I, Harrison and I Wayne. I knew they had it. I knew they had it. The, the yeah. Eli Manning did it with Akeem Nix and Victor Cruz. And wow. I, I'm blanking on the other one right now. But my point is, Brady, seven Super Bowl victories, never did it. Never, never did it, had 2,000 yeah. yard guys. So the, the so year I, they did, the year they did it, that was the year they went undefeated, and they, they didn't win it. You know, so, because Walker and Moss went over a thousand yards each yes. in a year, but they didn't end up doing it. And yeah. uh, it's, it's, it's fascinating. So I went back and I looked um, really interesting. It, it definitely shows you that the corollary is much more. Who is your quarterback than who are your receivers? Now, hey, doesn't hurt that those receivers. It, it's nice to have Hill and Waddle on the outside, but it right. was just very interesting to look like if you have the great quarterback, you typically like Rogers, Breeze, Roethlisberger, none of those guys ever had 2,000-yard receivers on the team So uh, when they won a Super Bowl. So it's very, well, very interesting. It's funny because you 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 say that, right? And then, you know, Tyreek's been talking about getting 2,000 yards this year. <laughs> and I, I'm saying no shot. If it happens, something went wrong with the Dolphins this yeah, year. Yeah, I agree wow. with you. The coach said, I need to run more. He admitted he didn't run yeah. enough in games that he had – then he's also developing offline tight ends because he has three tight ends that can block and catch, right? And then he's got these two that is, are experiments because since he doesn't have the one guy, he tried to trade for Darren Waller last year. They That couldn't happen. So clearly they want a Kelsey, a, uh, a Kittle, a, a Waller type, but they sure. couldn't get it, right? So now they've got these two young kids 
uh, one of them got injured, Tanner Connor already, but Tanner Connor and Higgins, the kid that they draft in the sixth round this year, those yep. two guys are playing offline tight end. So they're trying to create a, a catching position on the tight end side. And then they have the three blockers that can also catch, but they're not dynamic. These two kids are dynamic, but they don't know if they can play. Plus, he, wa he wants to include the running game more. And you got Braxton Berrios, who is probably, I mean, I ideal, perfect for a slot guy. Yeah. I just think they rounded out the offense so much more that, oh, and you added A-chain, which I know they're going to give him five to ten carries a game, and they're going to pass him the ball. So, you know, there's no way he gets 2,000 yards. If that happens, something went wrong. A lot of guys got hurt, probably including right. Waddle. Because you got to get the ball around. Yeah, no, I, I agree. You don't want him to have 2,000 yards. You no. want Hill to have like 1,500. And then right. you just move the ball around. That's when they're at their best. But no, I think it was interesting. Obviously, I gave a, a little more than a teaser there. But hopefully people read it. That comes out Friday. And then next week, I think, well, August 4th, it's my birthday. So whenever the heck, I think it's Friday, next Friday, I start my training camp tour. So I'll be going to uh, Chicago, Cleveland, Cincinnati, Indianapolis, Detroit, Minneapolis, Green Bay, and Kansas City. I'm looking forward to it, um, and that'll keep me busy for quite some time. So we're going to have a, a lot of content coming out with my byline on it, so make sure to check it out. Follow him on Twitter at Matt Verderam and catch his work there at Sports Illustrated. Matt, as always, thank you, my brother. Appreciate you immensely. Take care. You got it. 30 Mr. B.